Hello, fifth graders. I'm here with lesson 48 on reading and writing whole numbers in expanded notation. So the first thing that we need to talk about is place value. And you should already have these memorized, but let's quickly review it. So this is the ones place, the tens place, and the hundreds place. And all together, we kind of call those the no names because they don't have an end at the end. If you said like 532, there's not going to be an, a family name at the end. And then here we have a thousand, ten thousand, a hundred thousand, and we call all of these the thousands place. So let's look at our first example. So if we have a number 590 and we're asked to put it into expanded notation, basically we're going to take each each one that's in a different place value, and then you're going to multiply it by the place value it's in. So 590 has five hundreds. So you're going to write five times 100. And then we're going to add it to whatever number is in this place. So we're going to say 9 times 10 because there are nine tens here. And then we're going to do plus, you know, since there's zero there, you don't even need to do it, but if there was something in this place value, you would do whatever number it is times one. So this number, 590, can be written as five times 100, in parentheses, plus nine times 10. Let's look at another example. Write 74,000 in expanded notation. So what we're going to do is first we're going to write it into our spot here that shows us our place values. And if you don't make these little lines, that's okay as long as you're really good at picking out what places they go in. So we have 74,000 and then we don't have any in the no names. Now when we write it, we're always going to start here all the way to the left. So we're going to write 7 times and then whatever place value this is in. So we can see down here it's in the 10,000th place. So 7 times 10,000. And then we're going to add it to 4 times 1,000. And then if we had anything here, we'd have to keep going, but we don't. So that's the end of that example. Let's look at the next one. Write 123,006 in expanded notation. So we already wrote it out here, 123,000, and then we had 6 in the no name. Now when we go to write it, remember, we're going to start all the way to the left. And so we'll start by saying 1 times whatever place value this is. So what place value is it? Good, 100,000. And then we're going to add that to 2 times 10,000 plus 3 times 1,000 plus, we don't have any in the hundreds, we don't have any in the tens, so we don't need to do those ones, but we do have a 6 in the ones place, so we have to end with 6 times 1. And that is this problem finished, written out in, in expanded notation. Let's look at another one. Write 200,525 in expanded notation. So I wrote out 200,000 in the thousands place and then 525 in the no name place. We're going to start all the way to the left. Two times one mil, oh, one, two times 100,000 plus there's nothing here, there's nothing here, but I do have something here, so plus 5 times 100, because there's 5 in the 100th place, plus 2 times 10, plus 1 times 5. five sorry, 5 times 1. All right, what about if they have us go backwards? So here it says write in standard form, which is the usual way of writing numbers. So we're going to start, and we're going to find this number here, and we're going to place that number. Oh, it all got fuzzy on us. We're going to place that number in the hundred thousands place. So I'm going to draw a 9 right there. And then I'm going to look at the next one. So I'm going to put a 7 in the 10,000s place. 
and I'm going to put a 6 in the tens place. And then, and then I'm going to fill in all of the empty places with zeros because it means that there wasn't anything written there. And there you go. So this number written in standard form is 970,060. Let's look at another example. So write this number in standard form. I'm going to put my 8 in the 10 thousandths place, the 1 in the hundreds place, the 2 in the tens place, and the 3 in the ones place. And then I'm going to fill in my spaces with the zeros, which was right there. Here's another example. So I'm going to put my 9 in my hundred thousands place, another 9 in the thousands place, another 9 in the hundreds place, and another 9 in the ones place. And then I'm going to fill in the blanks with zeros. Because I know some people every year stumble on this. And lastly, one last nine that they want in the ones place. And as always, fill in any empty places that are not at the beginning of a number with zeros. So in standard form, I have 909,909. Check. Okay, now there's one more thing I want us to go over, and this is a problem that a lot of people get wrong, and so I'm going to, um, all right, and there's one more thing I want to go over, so go ahead and listen up. This one out because I know some people every year stumble on this. Draw a rectangle. So I drew a rectangle, and it says, all right, there's one more thing I want to go over, so listen up. Here we go. The problem says to draw a rectangle and shade one-seventh of it. So I started by drawing a rectangle, and I know that I'm going to break it into seven places because that's the denominator, so I have seven times one-seventh. And now I have to figure out what each place is going to be. Whenever we're talking about percent, like a percent of something, the total is always 100%. So that means that this question is basically asking, what is 1 7th of 100? Okay, and so we're looking for 1 7th of 100. I'm going to divide 100 by 7, and 7 goes into 10 one time, minus 7. I have a 3, I'll bring it up here. 7 goes into 30 four times. We get 28, and we have a remainder of 2. Now, with this remainder, don't just write remainder 2. We're going to turn that into a fraction by bringing it up here as our numerator and then putting it over the 7 as our denominator. So our final answer would be 14 and 2 sevenths percent. That's everything in this lesson, so go ahead and get to work.